Now this unit, the second unit basically talks about conditions and warranties. Now when we say conditions and warranties, first let us understand what is condition and what is warranty. In every contract of sale, there are certain conditions or warranties which may be agreed between the parties. They are known as express conditions and warranties. Now what they agree that we cannot say, so that depends if they agree, they don't agree. However, there are certain conditions and warranties which are given by law. And the law, the act says that if the seller sells the goods to the buyer, he has to fulfill these conditions and warranties. That the buyer is not going to ask him, hey seller, did you do that? No. The fact that he has sold the goods means he will fulfill those conditions and warranties. So what is condition? It is the root, the foundation, the basis of the contract. It is on this contract that the entire, you know, the whole contract, it is on this condition the contract is made. And if you fail to fulfill this condition, obviously it is so vital, so important, the contract will be cancelled because it is the foundation of the contract. On the other hand, what is, what is warranty? It just runs collateral. It is not a part of the main contract. It is subordinate. It just runs parallel to the main contract. And because I'm saying it's just subordinate, it's obviously not that important. And when it is not that important, if you there is a breach, you cannot cancel that. But can you claim the damages? Yes. So condition is stipulation, agreement, which is vital, important, necessary, root. What is warranty? It is collateral. It is subordinate. If there is a breach of condition, I can cancel the contract as well as claim the damages. But if there is a breach of warranty, I cannot cancel the contract. I can only claim the damages. Now, if there is a breach of condition, if instead of cancelling the contract, can the buyer decide to claim the damages? Yes. And if the buyer decides to only claim the damages, he has treated a breach of condition as a breach of warranty. That means if there is a breach of condition, first the contract becomes voidable. Second, and when I say voidable, instead of cancelling, he may affirm the contract. On the other hand, when we say warranty, can I ever, instead of, you know, claiming the damages, cancel the contract? No. So breach of warranty can never be treated as a breach of condition, but a breach of condition may be treated as a breach of warranty. I hope this is clear. Now, what are, the, as I told you, express is something that they agree. I cannot tell, you cannot tell, we cannot tell. But what is implied as given by law, we are going to study them. The first condition is condition as to title. What is this condition as to title? When I am selling the goods to the buyer, the buyer will not ask me, Oh, madam, you are selling the goods, you have a right to sell. No. Why will the buyer ask? Because he will imply, he is not supposed to ask, because he will imply that I am selling the goods, that means I have the right to sell the goods. Or if on a future date I am going to sell the goods, it's implied. He will never come and ask me, oh madam, that day you have a right to sell. No, the fact that I am selling the goods to him means I have a right to sell. So if the seller is selling the goods to the buyer, the buyer is under the impression that the seller has a right to sell or if he agrees to sell the goods, the buyer is under the impression that on that future date he will have the right to sell. Now, if the seller has no right to sell the goods, if the seller has no right to sell the goods, will the buyer get the ownership? No. Can the true owner claim, claim the goods back from the buyer? Yes. And if the true owner claims the goods back from the buyer, what will the buyer claim from the seller? The price of the goods. So condition as to title says that the seller should have a right to sell. The next one is, <coughs> excuse me, the next one is sale by sample. What is sample? I show the sample of the goods to you. If you like the goods, you can purchase it. I repeat again, I show the sample of the goods to you. If you like it, you can purchase it. Now, when the sale is made by sample, three conditions have to be fulfilled. We all know. One, though we all know. The bulk must correspond to the sample. It is not similar. It should be same. It is not similar. They are not saying similar to the sample. They are saying same to the sample. So whatever goods I get, it should be just as the sample was. Now tell me one thing. Can I trust blindfaithedly believe you and just accept the goods? No. Why should I do that? So the buyer has a right to examine the goods. He should be given an opportunity to examine the goods before he accepts. So I am not liable to blindfaithedly trust you and accept the goods. No. I have a right to examine the goods before I accept them. So the buyer must be given a right to examine the goods. Now 
see when we say defect in the goods there are two types of defects one is something which is visible to the eye the other is something which is not visible to the eye but which makes the goods unmerchantable what is unmerchantable the goods are not in a saleable or usable state that is i cannot use them i cannot sell them so when you are selling the goods by sample the goods must not have any latent can you see latent defect latent means hidden latent means what hidden defects the goods must not have any hidden defects which makes the goods unmerchantable so i repeat again the bulk must be just as the sample was the buyer must be given a chance to examine the goods and the goods must not have any latent defect which makes them unmerchantable if and please understand these conditions are and not or so even if one condition is not fulfilled it's not a valid sale so if any of the condition is not fulfilled the buyer can return the goods back now it may so happen that instead of showing the sample i may describe the goods and if the buyer wants he may purchase the goods so when we say description sale by description what is sale by description i describe the goods to you if you like you can purchase the goods what condition must be fulfilled when the sale is made by description the bulk must be and please again not similar same it must be just as the sample was the bulk must correspond to the sample is it clear to everyone yes the bulk must correspond to the sample now when we say the bulk must correspond to the sample if it is not as per the sample can the buyer return the goods back yes the buyer can return the goods back now in description when we talk about description the description of packing is also a part of description a condition as to description i repeat again the description of packing of the goods is also a part of sale by description so if the seller sells uh, says that he would sell me 10 cartons each containing 12 tins but the goods which i receive is 12 cartons each containing 10 tins though the quantity is same i'm still i have a right to return the goods back so when the seller has given a description of the packing the bulk must be just as the description was now sale by sample sale by description it can so happen that i also describe the goods and i also show the show you the sample of the goods so when the sale is made by both sample and description when the sale is made by both sample and description first the sample must be described as it is known in the market the sample must be described as it is known in the market and the bulk of the goods must correspond to both the sample and description the bulk of the goods must correspond to both the sample as well as the description please understand whenever more than one condition is given it is all the conditions have to be fulfilled if any of the condition is not fulfilled i have a right to cancel the contract then coming to the next condition the next condition it's a revision i'm going a little fast if you feel that okay you're not able to understand you already have my number do drop in a text i'll explain it to you now specific purpose the next one is condition as to specific purpose of the buyer at times i go and make the selection but at times it may so happen that instead of making the selection myself i ask the seller to make the selection for me so when i specify to the seller the reason i'm purchasing the goods and i let him decide then in that case he must give me only those goods which suit my purpose if the goods do not suit my purpose can i return the goods back yes so when i have specified the reason of his my purchase to the seller i have specified to him that why am i looking for those goods i have given him the reason what kind of goods i am looking for or why why am i looking for those kind of goods i've told him that specified to him that and i depend on the seller's skill and judgment what is this depend on the seller's skill and judgment when he selects the goods do i interfere oh no 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 not this please no no yes that then yes this do i do that no i calmly and quietly i'm like you know you just select i will say it i do this so i don't interfere with the selection that he's making i let him decide i let him select the goods for me i just depend on his skill and the seller is a dealer in those goods why it is important now please understand i go to a mobile dealer and i tell him give me this quality of a4 paper come on he's a mobile dealer how would he know about the papers but if i go to a paper dealer and tell him then he would know the ins and outs of every different variety of paper so he deals in those goods if all the three conditions are fulfilled it is implied that the seller can only sell those goods to the buyer which will suit the buyer's purpose 
If it does not suit the buyer's purpose, can the buyer return the goods back? Yes. Can he claim the price and damages? Yes. So when I specify the reason for my purchase, I depend on the seller's skill and judgment and the seller is a dealer of those goods. If he fails to give me the goods that I am looking for, can I cancel the contract? Yes. What is usage of trade? Usage of trade. Understand, for certain things, I don't need to tell you why am I why I want it. I can, do I have to say I want an AC which gives me cold air? No. Do I have to say I need a fridge which makes ice? No. An umbrella which protects me from the rain. That is the whole purpose of the umbrella, the fridge or the, uh, what do you say, AC. There are certain products we know by use what is the purpose that we are going to use these goods for. If those goods are not suitable for that specified purpose, is the buyer bound to take the goods? No. Can he cancel the contract? Yes. Can he return the goods and claim the price and damages? Yes. So when the goods have more than multiple uses, when the goods have multiple uses, I have to tell the buyer what use am I looking for. But when the goods have one specific use and I, we use them only for that purpose, why will I tell the buyer why I need it? So if I specify this, if I don't specify this to the buyer and it is not suitable, it is still, I am so sorry, if I do not specify it to the seller and he, he, in that case if he does not, if that goods are not suitable for that purpose, I still have a right to claim the price and damages. So when by use, we know the purpose of a product is not suitable for that purpose. Can I return the goods back and claim the price and damages? Yes. Now, the next one, mercantility. What is mercantility? The goods should be in a condition where it can be sold or it can be used. Where the goods can be sold, I have written sale. The goods can be sold or it can be used. So let us say I, uh, I purchase wipes, I wipe this side of my face, my face is red, you wipe this side of your face, your face is red. So can we say they are not in a usable state? Yes. Can we return the goods back? Yes. So if the goods, the goods should be in a usable or a saleable state. So if they are not in a usable state, can we return the goods back? Yes. So please understand, it's not just this. If the packing is also defective, that also makes the goods unmercantable. So let us say you go to purchase anything in the market, supermarket, and you have picked up this packet and this packet is not properly sealed. Are you bound to purchase the goods? No. The packing is defective and they make the goods unmercantable. So uh, defective packing of the goods also makes the goods unmercantable. However, if I am personally not in a condition to use a particular good, my I, I am allergic to some goods. Let's say I am allergic to peanut butter. And I go and eat that peanut butter, uh, I mean a sandwich which is made of peanut butter. Can I hold the seller liable? No. How will the seller know that I am allergic to it? That doesn't make, and if anyone else uses it or uh, consumes it, will they have the same problem? No. So if I have a personal ailment, if I am personally allergic to something, that does not make the goods unmercantable. So personal ailment of, does not make the goods, what? Unmercantable. Now, wholesomeness is an extension of mercantility. It applies for food. It applies to food and stuff. Mercantable they should be. So if the packing is defective, then we can say they are not mercantable. But if they are not in a consumable state, what is consumable state? Like there was a case, there were typhoid germs in milk. So why should a milk have typhoid germs? So the goods were not in a consumable state. So when we say Cadbury worms were there in Cadbury, we have seen so many times. So the goods are not in a consumable state. And when the goods are not in a consumable state, the goods are not wholesome. So wholesome is nothing but an extension of mercantility which applies only to food and provision. When we purchase food, apart from being mercantable, they should be wholesome. That is in a consumable state. So what we had discussed, the first condition was condition as to title. The seller must have the right to sell or if he agrees to sell, he must have the right to sell on the future date. If he has no right to sell buy, and the buyer is, the goods are taken away from the buyer by the true owner, the buyer can claim the price from the seller. Sale by sample. Sh sample is shown. If you like, you can purchase. Bulk must correspond to the sample. Then the buyer must be given an opportunity to examine the goods and the goods must not have any defect which makes them unmercantable. Then what was the next one? Description. The goods are described. Again, the bulk must correspond to the description. Packing the description if it is given, that is also part of description. Then what was the next one? Sale by sample and description. The bulk, the sample must be described as it is known in the market and the bulk must correspond to both the sample and description. Again, not similar, same, correspond to the sample and description. 
specific purpose of the buyer the buyer specifies the reason of his purchase depends upon the seller's skill and judgment and the seller is a dealer of those goods if the goods do not suit the buyer's purpose can the buyer return the goods back yes mercantility the goods should be in a saleable or a usable state if they are if personal ailment of a person does not make the goods unmercantable and if the packing is defective that also makes the goods unmercantable an extension of mercantility wholesomeness when we purchase goods they should be in a consumable state and the last one usage of trade by use we know the purpose of the goods so if it is not suitable for that purpose can i return the goods back yes the next one uh, warranty implied warranty as i have already told you warranty is collateral so if there is a breach of warranty i cannot cancel the contract i can only claim the damages so the first warranty is undisturbed acquired possession it is nothing but see there are certain cases where a condition may be treated as a warranty for example for my own benefit if you remember i told you voidable so for my own benefit i decide to treat a breach of condition as a breach of warranty or when when we when we talk about uh, let us say when, when we talk about uh, law it's not necessary that everyone knows a law we are studying law we are experts in law but it may so happen that some other person may not be aware of the laws so he got the goods which were not as per whatever was the requirement whatever it was not as per the requirement though i had specified the reason to the seller and he thought he is bound to keep the goods he should have actually returned the goods but he did not know that and by not knowing this by the ignorance of the law he used the goods so if you remember mistake of indian law you have no remedy the contract is valid so there also a breach of condition becomes a breach of warranty now you only have a right to claim the damages you would say but ma'am i did not know the law what is my fault yes no fault but by mistake also if ignorance of law you have ratified the contract the contract becomes valid the contract is not separa separable and rescission is sought for a part only what is this you asked for a shirt and the that kind of shirt that you wanted was not given to you you say i love the buttons of the shirt could you please give me the buttons take this shirt can you do that no so there are certain contracts which can be cancelled in parts and there are certain contracts which cannot be cancelled in parts if a contract cannot be cancelled in parts and you want to cancel it in parts then you have treated a breach of condition as a breach of warranty contract is not separable that is you cannot cancel it in parts you should either affirm the entire or cancel the entire contract if there you cancel a part you have treated a breach of condition as a breach of warranty and the last one where it is excused by law here it's not even warranty i am not supposed to perform the contract neither give you any price or damages uh let us say i show you the sample of the goods and uh, you like the sample you decide to purchase it uh but what happens before i could give you the goods there is a change in law and now we cannot deal in these goods so because of change in law this contract is now discharged if you remember supervening impossibility so here you cannot ask me for damages also i'm not liable to give you damages also in fact the contract is excused by change in law can you if you have paid advance money can you claim yes restitution so coming back again to warranty there are certain cases where a breach of condition may be treated as a breach of warranty the first one undisturbed possession is nothing but condition as to title treated as warranty now let us say the seller sold you goods which were stolen let let's just uh, uh, which was stolen from someone else he sold you the goods do you get the ownership no will the true owner take away the goods from you yes so when the true owner takes away the goods from you you should have gone and claim the whole price but instead of claiming the whole price you claim only the damages you have treated a breach of condition as a breach of warranty now you would be wondering ma'am why would i claim the price uh, damages sorry instead of price we don't know why maybe you did not know the laws maybe you thought you have used the goods you cannot claim the whole price whatever the, the reason could be but instead of claiming the price you have claimed only the damages another one quality and fitness by usage of trade you purchase this uh, ac instead of hot cold air it gives you hot air but it it is you don't want to return the ac back it's completely you know merges into the decor of your room so you ask the company to repair it so instead of cancelling the contract you have only claimed the damages you have again treated a breach of condition as a breach of warranty so this too are nothing but conditions treated as warranty the other two freedom from encumbrances encumbrance means what charge of a third party charge of a third party what does this mean 
if you remember in the uh, at the beginning of this you know ch chapter revision we were talking that i have my phone which i give uh, give it to you as a for a loan as a security and sell it now if i don't pay you the money can you go and claim from the buyer the goods yes so that means the buyer is suffering because i have sold goods to him on which you have a charge right i repeat again i gave my goods to you as a security and without paying you off i sold the goods to another person now because of your special rights can you go and claim that goods from him yes so when you go and claim the goods from him uh, because i have sold him goods on which you have a charge because of which he suffers damages can he come and claim the damages from me yes when the seller sells the goods to the buyer on which a third party has a charge when the seller sells the goods to a buyer on which a third party that is you have a charge and because of this charge the buyer suffers damages the buyer will claim the damages from the seller i hope it's clear to all of you the next one disclosure of dangerous see if the goods are dangerous like if you see if you go to watch a movie the first thing smoking uh, you know is injurious to health smoking kills alcohol none of the actors when the seller is selling goods to the buyer which are dangerous in nature it is the buyer's duty seller's duty to inform the buyer about the dangerous nature please understand when the seller is selling goods to the buyer which are dangerous which have which are in some way dangerous in nature it is the seller's duty to inform the buyer about it if he fails to do so and because of that dangerous nature the buyer suffers any damage the buyer can claim the damages from the seller so when this uh, he cannot return the goods the goods are not uh, you know uh, the goods are proper but the dangerous nature of the goods was not informed so in this case can he claim the damages from the seller yes so i hope you have understood all the different um, conditions and warranties the last topic of this unit uh, instead of actually making a single video for the whole chapter i have divided this video into two units and two units the reason being you may not want to actually see the entire chapter maybe just a few parts and if you want to see the ent entire chapter then it's not a problem so the next two units you'll find it in the next video not in this video caveat emptor what does it mean let the buyer beware the whole point is that when the buyer purchases goods for himself it is his duty to check the goods suit him he cannot say that the seller's duty to give me my goods no you are purchasing the goods it is your liability to check whether the goods suit your purpose or not you cannot hold the seller liable so what caveat emptor means is that the buyer cannot hold the seller liable for the wrong selection of goods made by him i repeat again what it means is the buyer cannot hold the seller liable for the wrong selection of the goods made by him so if the buyer has made a wrong selection of the goods he is liable responsible for those goods he cannot hold the seller liable so caveat emptor let the buyer be where the buyer is responsible for the right selection of the goods it is the duty of the buyer to make the right selection he cannot hold the seller liable for his wrong selection right lekin law mein kya hota hai locha so there are cases where the rule of caveat emptor does not apply here i have given it to you in short in my scanner the entire answer is given because if it is for 7 marks you cannot just write this much in my scanner you will find the link to all these documents is there you can see it below in the bar it's given i have given you the link where you will find all these documents so the in the scanner i have given you the entire answer in a just to remember where the rule of caveat emptor does not apply first in case of implied condition in case of implied condition now what does this mean what is this implied condition caveat emptor means buyer cannot return the goods back but if the sale is made by sample and the goods are not as per the sample can the buyer return the goods back yes sale is made by description goods are not as per the description can the buyer return the goods back yes the goods are not mercantile the goods are not wholesome the goods are not fit for the purpose they are used can the buyer return the goods back yes the the buyer has specified the reason of his purchase to the seller but the goods do not suit his purpose can he return the goods back yes 
goods were stolen sale was made by fraud can you return the goods back yes so in all of these cases caveat emptor says you cannot return but in all of these cases the buyer has a right to return the goods back Second, in case of purchase of goods under a, tra a trade name, that is in branded goods, when you purchase branded goods, in branded goods they generally tell you in what goods you will get what. It's already mentioned that what you will get in what. So let us say you purchase a mobile and they say that this mobile will have a 12 megapixel camera, and you are happy. Today all my social media will be flooded with my selfies, be, be it Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Facebook story, WhatsApp story, everywhere it's just me, me and me. So what do you do? You go take this phone home, you open the phone, very happy, you pose and then you realize, ah, it's not 12 megapixel, it, you realize it's 3.2, you go to return the goods back, the seller says it's your duty. Can he refuse to take the goods? No. In that branded goods, it's already given that this will, this feature will be there in this phone. If that feature is missing, can I return the goods back? Yes. So in these two cases, we cannot obviously write these two cases. We cannot even write just this much. The proper appropriate answer is given in the scanner. Please do look into that. I hope you've understood this, these two units. And uh, the, the main purpose of this video is obviously so that you can understand when you talk about uh, what you say the day before the exam when you are going to revise. It's very difficult for us to revise. So hope it helped you. Thank you. The next two units will be uploaded in the next video. Thank you so much.